All right, we're gonna go over your test um, over hair, fiber, and fingerprinting from chapter 12 and 16. Um, number one, the phases of hair growth include all of the following except, remember that we have our antigen phase, which is our first phase, catagen phase, which is the second phase where growth is beginning to um, stop, and then telogen phase, is when the hair follicle actually falls out naturally. So, follogen phase is not a phase of hair growth. That should have been your answer. Number two, use the following fingerprint to answer the question. <clears throat> so, if I'm looking at this fingerprint, I've got this section that I'm looking at, I have this section, and this one here. If you remember, this kind of triangular structure is what we call a delta. So I know that number one is a delta. Number two looks like one is splitting into two, or I can think of that the other way is two is becoming into one. But whenever I have that is what I call a bifurcation. Or... Um, you can refer to it as a fork, but most of the time you'll see it as bifurcation, especially in this class. And then here you have a ridge that comes, and then you see this kind of circle, and then it continues on in that path. So that is what we call an I. So number one is a delta, two bifurcation, three is an I. So your answer should have been D. Question three, hair shaft is composed of three parts. Use the image to answer the following three questions. So which part of the hair shaft is identified by A? So we'll go ahead because this is uh, three, four, and five. A is the main part of the hair shaft, which if we're thinking about the pencil, like a pencil analogy, this is the wood. So the main part of the hair is what we call the cortex. B is like the lead inside or what runs through the middle. So that's the medulla. And then C is the outside covering or scales. If we're thinking about a pencil, this is like the paint um, that's like orange or yellow on the outside of a wooden pencil. So this is what we call the cuticle. Okay, that's what has the scales. And we have different types of scales that we can look at. So A here is the cortex. Four was B in the middle for medulla, and then C was the outside layer, which is the cuticle. Okay, number six, the blank is vital for the indivi indiv individualization of hair evidence. So if we're talking about individualization, we are narrowing it down to a single suspect. So <clears throat> all hair evidence is what we call class evidence. Okay, remember that we talked about class evidence and how we can narrow that to a group. So we might be able to find a class of people with the same hair color, um, maybe a specific type of ethnicity, like European hair, African hair, Asian hair, something like that. We can narrow that to a group of people or class evidence. The only way that we can individualize hair evidence and narrow that down to possibly a single person would be if we have that follicular tag connected to it. So if we have a follicular tag connected to it, we have that follicle that has that root attached, then I can use that for mitochondrial DNA. Okay, which we know only comes from the mother, but it'll help us to hopefully narrow that down to an individual suspect or get close to um, an individual suspect. Number seven, the most prevalent plant fiber. So prevalent means most common or widely available. Well, we know from all the clothes and things that we've worn um, that we have that a lot of stuff is made out of cotton. So that's the most common one that you'll see. Number eight, the hair shown has which sort of cuticle pattern? So if we're looking at the cuticle pattern, remember that the cuticle pattern is that outside kind of scale covering okay and we have three different types we have the imbricate we have spinous and we have coronal 
fragmented is a type of medulla, so I know that I can get rid of that one. Okay, so between these three cuticle patterns, um, imbricate is like the little scales that like humans have, and so you'll see they're just very like random, they run like that. Spinous is gonna kind of be feathery looking. Um, something sort of like that, like very, very fish scale looking. And then coronal is, can look kind of a few different ways, but for the most part, it's going to look like these kind of cups stacking on top of one another. Okay. And so if I look at this, I can kind of see those, that little cup that's kind of stacking on top of each other. Um, and so coronal is going to be my answer choice there. Nine, type of protein made up of a chain of amino acids that makes hair both strong and flexible. Okay, melanin is uh, talking about some sort of pigment, so that's not even um, an answer choice. Uh, protein, uh, we wouldn't use a type of protein and just say protein, that wouldn't even make sense. So it leaves us down to two answer choices. If you think about um, your notes and your reading, um, casein really isn't one that we came in contact with. Keratin is going to be the only type of protein that's going to make hair strong and flexible. Question 10. The most common type of fingerprint pattern is, and this came straight from kind of our class discussions and it was also in your notes, most common type of fingerprint pattern, we know that arches only occur 5% of the time. They're the least common one. A loop occurs 60 to 65% of the time and whorls are anywhere from 30 to 35%. So if we're looking for most common, we know that it's going to be loop. Question 11. Okay. Type of fiber that is made up from plants or animals is classified as, well, um, original is not even one. Natural is what we have from plants or animals, so it's coming from natural things. When we talk about synthetic or manufactured, those two terms are somewhat interchangeable, meaning that we're making those fibers in a lab. So we're looking at A. Which term refers to a print found at a crime scene? Okay. Um, there were three types of prints that we saw in your notes. Um, visible, visible print, plastic print, or latent print. Usually, we can kind of term everything found at a crime scene as a latent print. Those are those invisible prints that we're going to use some sort of lifting method to um, be able to pull and use that fingerprint for further investigation. So everything that we did in our lab with like the dusting, the super glue method, those are using those methods to find a latent fingerprint. 13, what is the recommendation of the number of minutiae points that must be in common in order for prints to be considered matches in the United States? Well, this is a recommendation. There is actually no minimum in the United States. Okay, so some of you might have chosen D, but um, we're looking at recommendations. So straight from your notes, straight from your class discussion, we talked about that Usually it's recommended anywhere from 8 to 16 points have to match on a fingerprint in order for us to really consider that they are matches to one another. There's anywhere from about 150 different prints um, on a single fingerprint. Okay, So we can have up to 150 different minutiae points. But if we're looking for comparisons, we're going to look at the patterns, and then we'll look at those minutiae points or ridge characteristics. So 8 to 16 is my recommendation, and so the one that falls under that would be B. Question 14. In hair growth, the antigen phase may last up to... So the antigen phase is my first phase. And I know that that first phase can last for anywhere from zero to six years. So that came uh, straight from your note outline. And we also discussed that on our first uh, human versus animal lab. 15, 
Looking at the image below, select both that apply. So if this is a left index finger, okay, if I look at this overall pattern, the pattern is turning around. It doesn't really start at one side and then loop into another. So I would classify this as a type of uh, probably plain whirl here. Okay, I definitely know that it is a whirl pattern though, just from the way that it looks. Um, so whirls, so I can already cancel out owner loops. I know it's not a type of loop. So this left index finger is kind of um, some extra information because really our types of loops are only classified as either owner or radial. And then um, I know that whirls are the second most common fingerprint, and I know that those occur anywhere from 30 to 35% of the time. So two and four are the only ones that are correct here. So answer choice D. Okay, 16 is somewhat of a tricky one. Um, choose the statement that is true about fingerprints. So A, the section of your skin called the epidermis is responsible for your fingerprints and they do not change throughout your life. There is some true statements in here. The thing that's not true though is the epidermis. This is something that we talked about in, after our balloon fingerprint lab is the epidermis is not responsible for the fingerprint. It's that layer of skin called the dermal papillae. So remember that we talked about that dermal papillae that's actually what's giving your fingers the ridge. The epidermis is going to cover that because it's the outer layer of skin, but it's not really responsible for your fingerprints, okay? Or the epidermis isn't, it's the dermal papillae. B, minutiae are abundant on a, on a complete fingerprint with about 10 on each fingerprint. Well, a couple questions ago, we just talked about that there's anywhere from about 150 different types of minutiae prints on there. So, um, 10 would be kind of in that recommended range, but really we're going to have about 150 different points of comparison that we could possibly look at. So that one is not correct. C is latent fingerprints are made from oils and sweats left behind on the surface, and there are several ways to collect them, but it depends on the type of surface. So this is everything from our fingerprint lifting lab. So those latent fingerprints, the things that have been left behind that are invisible, we're using various different methods and the method that we use is going to depend upon the surface that we have. So we've got like super glue, we have powders, we have iodine, we have that chemical ninhydrin. Okay, there's lots of different methods and those are all depending upon the type of surface that that fingerprint is actually on. And then D, whirls are most common. They are radial if they point to the little finger and ulnar if they point towards the thumb. Well, we know that whirls are not most common. So um, loops are the most common one because loops occur 60 to 65% of the time. So we know that whirls are not the most common, so that can't be it. So the one that's true is C. All right, matching, match the following techniques to their respective descriptions. So 17 can be used on porous surfaces, it adheres to amino acids to turn blue purple and may take several hours to show. So this blue purple is a very big hint and I showed you a video of this chemical but it is C ninhydrin. 18 reacts with porous surfaces such as paper, wood, styrofoam, and combines with Cl2 and sweat and turns a rust color. So this rust color um, and also porous surfaces in our lab, you remember if you put in the, the Ziploc bag and the paper, put the iodine pellets into it, after a while it began to turn those fingerprints a rust color or a brownish, uh, dark brown color. So A is the answer for 18 and then 19 non-absorbent surfaces so like glass metal or plastic and this adheres to oils or perspirations well the only thing and and the only one that we even used in a lab was that black or magnetic powder so you used on a either glass or some of you used your cell phone use that fingerprint dusting powder to bring out the um, 
light and print and collect it using tape. So B is the answer. And then the last thing <clears throat> for your essay part, correctly identify the suspects that are consistent with the crime. So A, suspect A is the one that matches and you needed to tell me why. So why would have been, they had matching minutiae points and you could have described those. You could have talked about or should have talked about the specific pattern that it was. So they were both world type patterns. You could talk about the little scarring down here, but you needed to tell me suspect A and describe why. B, describe the collect chemical used for lifting this print on glass. So there was three different types on B. So B, you had three things that you needed to do. You needed to talk about glass, paper, and then tile or light bulb. So on glass, you could have either used um, powders or you could have used uh, super glue fuming. Paper, you could have used iodine or ninhydrin. And then on tiles or lights, you could have used powder or you could have used um, super glue fuming again. So you needed to describe methods for all three of those types of, of, um, of objects. C, identify at least three different minutiae points discussed in class. So on this one and this one, you needed to find basically minutiae points that matched. If you did it on some of the others, that's fine, but you needed to find three different minutiae points. They had to be different. They couldn't be just a bunch of different bifurcations. You needed to find different ones, and that could be different for everybody. And then D, identify the fingerprint patterns as arches, loops, or whirls. <clears throat> you needed to identify it for all four suspects. So this was a whirl type pattern. Both of these were loops. And then this one was a whirl. If you went and defined the sub pattern, um, I kind of gave a few of you some extra credit points if you defined them correctly, but really I was just looking for the types of patterns. And so these both are whirls. The two middle ones, suspect B and C, are loops.